Hello and welcome to this week's video which is part 2 of the I edit your photos series. A couple weeks ago I asked you to send me your raw pictures if you like to and I would try to edit as many as possible. I chose 36 pictures but those pictures that's so many that I can't do that in one video so I split it up in two and so today I'm editing the last 18 photos. If you haven't yet watched part 1 I would recommend that you do because in this episode I'll be speedrunning the edits a bit faster because many steps of the process will be the same as often shown in part 1. I'll then be slowing down for the important parts of the edit that make the difference. Alright so let's start off with this wonderful sunrise or sunset shot by Antonio Boliteo. There's not really that much to do here I find, just some tonal balancing and colour shifts. First I warmed up the white balance a little bit and then did my usual decontrasting, although I left out the contrast slider itself because that much decreasing wasn't necessary. Using the dehaze slider to add to the atmospheric haze in the air already did the job pretty well together with the highlights and shadows slider. Then in the curves I made this shape which in the last episode I decided to call a W curve. And this gives me some contrast in the shadows but the information in the mids remain whereas the highlights also get pushed down. As usual, I used the red channel to add some teal in the shadows and the blue channel for some extra yellow. I skipped the colour tab and only made slight adjustments in the calibration tab to shift the reds just a little towards orange. Then I used the colour wheels to add some yellowish greens to the mids, some red in the highlights and some greenish yellows in the shadows. This is pretty much it actually, what's left is a brush stroke through the middle where there's some haze which I wanted to enhance even more by adding some more haze and brightening the spot. Also I shifted the temperature and tint a bit because the middle was looking a bit too pink. Lastly of course I added some sharpening and grain and that is it, here is the before and after. I hope you like the result. Next I've got this beautiful photograph by Ilias Cooks. I started with my usual routine and the basic adjustments where I warmed the photo up, recovered a lot of the details, softened the image and saturated it a little extra. Then moving on to the curves I made a W curve again but with a stronger emphasis on the shadows. Then I used the red channel to add some teal in the curves and a little bit of red to the highlights. I also added some yellow to the mids using the blue curve. Then I skipped down to the calibration tab to make some colour shifts. The main goal here for me was to separate the greens from the oranges nicely and so I used the red primary and the green primary to pull the two colours apart. I further emphasised this using the colour tab where I selected green and shifted that hue slightly towards aqua and lowered the luminance to darken it a little. Additionally I added a bit of saturation to both yellow and orange. Then with the colour wheels I added some more orange to the mids to enhance the sunrise feeling. Then I added some blue to the highlights to bring back a little bit of the sky's colour and some green in the shadows. And that's most of the work done now, what's left is some masking. I used a gradient to pull down the brightness of the sky a little and cooled that area to get a bit of the sky's blue in the corner. Also I brushed over the edge of the house's roof and decreased texture, clarity and dehaze so that the edge becomes softer. Lastly I added one final gradient from the side to darken that part a little bit. And that's it, I finished this with some sharpening and grain and here is the before and after. I hope you're happy with the result. Next up I've got a night shot by at Eden Shin. The first thing I did was significantly bring down the white balance and then did my usual decontrasting, softening and added a little saturation. Then in the curves I brought back some contrast with a slight S curve and then used the red channel to add teal to the shadows and red to the highlights. The red was intended to adjust the colour of the left side a little, working towards a nice colour contrast between the left and right. Wanting to further push that colour split, I went down to the calibration tab where I made some slight adjustments to get the orange and blue looking the way I want, even when most of it were just subtle changes. The rest of the colour editing I did in the colour grading tab where I added some orange to the mids, some reddish orange to the highs and a little bit of blue to the shadows. And that's it already, I added sharpening and grain as a final touch and ended with this before and after. I hope you like it. Then here I have a photograph by Putra et Lela, a fabulous sunset captured in this minimalistic way. The shot was slightly overexposed but still totally fine to work with if the overexposed look is what we're going for. So at first I shifted the white balance to warm up the image and brought down the tint. Then I did my usual basic adjustments but with a strong emphasis on bringing down the highlights and I made this shot a bit softer than usual to embrace the look of that tree fading into the sunset. 
Then in the curves, I brought back some contrast and added teal to the shadows, red to the highlights, and yellow to the mids again. Then I wanted to play around with the colors a bit more in the calibration tab where I made these changes, which all just adjusted the tone of the green grass in relation to the orange light. I wanted to make sure that the grass stays quite green looking. Then in the color grading tab, I added some orange to the mids and highs to enhance the sky, and I added a little more teal to the shadows to cool off the grass. Then, to finish this off, I added a couple gradients and masks. I added one from the bottom to slightly darken that area, then one from each edge to cool off the image from every side, leaving the warmth more concentrated in the middle. And then I used two radial gradients, one to warm up the tree a little bit more, and the other to further soften the tree, so that it melts together with the sky in a smoother way. Lastly, a touch of sharpening and grain, and here is the before and after. I hope you enjoy the edit. Next, I have this wild photograph by Linus Schneider, who seemed to have been above the clouds here. This edit was a bit different, because the shot already looked really good. I adjusted the white balance a bit to lean into this hazy orange look. I brightened the shot up a good bit and softened it. For a change, I actually dehazed the image to bring back the windmills in the distance a little, and desaturated the photo. Then, in the curves, I brought back some contrast and darkened the shot again with this curve, and then added more red to the shot using the red channel and some yellow using the blue channel. And that is it already. I didn't do anything else. I hope you like this subtle edit. Then, next I have this shot by at Martin Wagner, which is going to be the complete opposite of the previous edit, because this one's going to need some work, because as you can see, the lighting is all over the place, but not on the subject, so we'll have to work around that a bit. First, I slightly warmed up the shot using the white balance slider, and then continued with my basic adjustments, which however in this photograph was quite different. I brightened the photo and lifted the shadows a lot to gain some more detail in the dark areas. For a change, I actually added both dehaze and clarity, which I did because I find it suits the subject matter. Something mechanical, such as a car especially, in this indoor environment, doesn't go together so well with a soft natural look. I think it's fine to lean into the unnatural look here, especially considering the colour of the car. Speaking of colours, I added some saturation and then moved to the curves. Here, I brought back a tasteful amount of contrast, and then did my teal in the shadows and reds in the highlights thing in the red channel, and again added yellow in the mids using the blue channel. Then, I didn't further play around with the colours because I kind of just wanted to leave the car as it is and not distort its colour here, even though I of course don't truly know what the purple looked like in real life. What I did do to the colours however was some overall colour grading. In the mids, I added some orange, in the highs, some red, and in the shadows, some cold green. Now comes the part that I knew was going to be some work on this photo, and that is masking. I started off with some gradients to darken the bottom, the top left corner, and the bottom right corner to really draw the concentration of the photograph to the car. Then I brushed over the highlights at the back of the left side to bring those down a bit. On the other hand, I brushed over the highlights in the upper right corner to boost them a bit. And then I basically just brushed over the shapes of the car. I brushed over those parts that looked like highlights to boost them even more, and then I did the same with the shapes that looked like shadows, which I also boosted, meaning I darkened them. Then I added a radial gradient onto the entire vehicle to simply brighten it a little more and add some contrast and really make it punchy. And then I added one last brush stroke to the right side of the car to boost the highlights there. And that wraps up the edit, I sharpened the image and added a touch of grain, and here is the before and after. I hope you like it. Next up I've got this shot by W Plus Film. This is another shot that is edited in my pretty typical way I would say, basically I want to reduce contrast and adjust the colours to my liking. I started by bringing up the white balance a lot to warm up the shot and bring out some orange colour in the wood. Then, as usual, I brightened the shot, reduced contrast, softened everything and added saturation. In the curves, I brought down the blacks a little and boosted the mids and highlights. I added some teal to the shadows and a slightly bigger than usual portion of yellow to the mids. Then, in the calibration tab, I made small adjustments to balance the colour of the wood and the sky. The sky was still a bit too desaturated for my taste, so I went into the colour tab and boosted the saturation of blue and aqua. Then, in the colour grading tab, I added some orange to the mids, blue to the highs, and a little bit of green to the shadows. And lastly, I added sharpening and grain, and here is the final result. I hope you enjoy it.
Then here's the next shot, this is by at dahal.ad. This is going to be another pretty typical edit I think. I started by warming up the shot with a white balance to get the warm sunset look from the start. Then I reduced the contrast to bring out all the details, especially the shadows, and softened the shot and increased the saturation. Then in the curves I brought back some contrast, added my usual teal and red curve, and yellow in the mids with the blue curve. Next I adjusted the calibration to keep the greens behind the three guys looking green and not too yellow, but also balance out the colour of the sunlight. Then in the colour grading tab I added quite a bit of orange to the mids to really push this warm look. I added a slightly redder orange to the highlights and some more teal to the shadows. Then I added a gradient to darken the left side of the frame which felt a bit too bright. Now the shot is looking pretty good already, but something didn't feel quite right. The bottom third somehow felt unnecessary and maybe even a bit distracting, so I decided to crop the photograph to the cinemascope aspect ratio, which I think suits the photograph so well. And so, finally, I added sharpening and grain, and here is the final result. I hope you like it. Then, the next photo is by at torderberg.photo. This is going to be another pretty similar edit. Many of these edits are based off the same idea, just the strength of each parameter is always different depending on the shot. So here I warmed up the shot and did my usual basic edits. Same in the curves, I just did what I usually do. The colours I left untouched, and in the colour grading tab I added lots of warmth. Obviously I was going for this warm sunset look, and so I added various tones of orange and red to each tonal range. Lastly, I finalised the shot with some masks. I just brushed over a couple spots which I wanted to brighten up slightly and emphasise the light there. And so, with sharpening and grain on top, this is the final result. I hope you like it. Then, next up, here is a cool shot by at Leonie Zettel. This one is going to be a bit different of course, seeing as we've got a more moody looking photograph here. I started off by cooling the shot down a little and then continued with my usual process in the basic adjustments. Nothing unusual yet. Same in the curves, I added contrast, brought a stronger than usual amount of teal into the shadows because it looks really good with the greens, and some yellow in the mids. Then in the calibration I made the biggest adjustment to the green primary which basically separates the greens from the skin tones really nicely. Now for this shot, for a change, I did want to play around with the colour a bit more. Firstly, I wanted to boost the skin tones a little by increasing the saturation of both yellow and orange. On the other hand, I slightly desaturated aqua. And now comes an important change I find. I shifted the greens a little towards aqua and then desaturated them strongly and also brought down the luminance. When done in moody shots, I find this type of green look pretty cool. Then I continued in the colour grading tab where I added a yellowish green to the mids, a slightly magenta leaning blue to the highs, which looks especially nice on the white shirt I find, and a bit of red in the shadows. Then to finish this off, I brushed over the rose a couple times in different strengths to brighten it a little. Lastly, I added sharpening and grain, and here is the final result. I hope you like it. Alright, so next I have this photo by Tontran Sorthea Rot. Here I did another edit with the pretty much same steps as I usually do. So I warmed it up a tad and then edited the basic adjustments. In the curves I added contrast, the teal tint to the shadows and some yellow to the mids. Then in the calibration tab I again made the biggest change on the green primary because this photograph contains a lot of green, which I wanted to separate from yellow and orange. Then in the colour grading tab I only added a little bit of yellow to the mids, some orange to the highs and some teal to the shadows. And that's it, I added sharpening and grain and this is my end result. I hope you're happy with the look. Then here I have this sports photograph by Embry Erickson. This is an interesting one to edit because there are already strong tendencies in colour to work with here. I love the strong orange light from behind and intend to achieve some colour contrast with the pitch. So the white balance was already pretty cool, however I pushed that even further and shifted the tint slightly towards green. Then I decreased the overall contrast as usual to bring back some details and softened the image. Then in the curves I brought back the contrast but slightly faded the blacks which I simply found fitting here. I used the red channel to add quite a lot of teal to the shadows to bring back the green colour of the pitch and added just a tiny bit of red to the highlights. And in the blue channel I added some yellow to the mids. In the calibration tab I then made small changes except on the green primary where I shifted the hue significantly to separate the oranges from the greens and to get even more of that colour contrast. Then in the colour grading tab I added some green to the midtones, some yellow to the highlights and some more teal to the shadows. 
Then I made some more finishing touches with the brush. I brushed over the player's face and shifted the temperature and tint a little to bring more color into that face. Lastly, I added one rather fat brush stroke straight through the middle and darkened and dehazed that area, which simply added some extra contrast to the photo by having that part a little darker. And that is it. Add sharpening a grain and you get this. I hope you're fond of the result. Next up, I've got this lovely photograph from what looks like a road trip shot by Severi Lankinen. I wanted to mostly just make the shot warmer and feel more like a summer memory and so I started off by significantly shifting the white balance. Then I did my usual stuff in the basic adjustments and curves. Similarly, I made a small adjustment in the calibration tab except for the green primary which I shifted a bit stronger. Then in the color grading tab, I added some orange to the midtones, some blue to the highlights to bring back the sky's color and some orange to the shadows. Lastly, I added a couple masks. I brightened the tree on the upper left side. I also added a brush stroke right above the mirror to darken that part and cool it a little to create some more variation in color, even if it's just subtle. Then I brushed over parts of the forest which I wanted to highlight and also the sky where I wanted to add a little bit of saturation. Then I finished this with, of course, sharpening and grain and here is the before and after. I hope you like the result. Then, next I edited this shot by At Alai Shu, which I did in a pretty similar manner again. I think the most important thing here is again to set the right base. I was aiming for a warm edit, so I set the white balance to 6900, and then proceeded with my usual basic adjustments, with in this case a strong emphasis on bringing down the highlights and adding haze by decreasing the dehaze slider. Then in the curves I also did my usual contrast adding and colouring with the red channel and the blue channel. In the calibration tab I most notably shifted the green primary again and then in the colour grading tab I added orange to the midtones, some reddish orange to the highs and some teal to the shadows. Lastly I applied sharpening and some grain and here is the before and after. I hope you like the result. Then here's a photograph by Joel Casey, very much the kind of stuff that I've shot in the past so of course editing this is like a habit for me. When it comes to these foggy photographs without any other light sources, the edits can actually be really simple depending on the look that you're going for. I decided to go for a dark blue look and so I cooled the image and darkened it a little, but not as much as I intend to just yet. Further, I of course softened the image and added more haze with the dehaze slider. In the curves, I made this shape, which is just another way to darken the image. Then I added a stronger than usual amount of teal in the shadows with the red channel curve. And then in the blue channel curve, I made this shape, which essentially adds some yellow to the mids, but blue to the shadows. And that's pretty much it. I used a brush stroke just to add a little bit more haze, and then I went back to the exposure slider to adjust the overall darkness to my liking. I went for a really dark look. Lastly, I applied sharpening and grain again, and here is the final result. I hope you like the outcome. Then let's move on to the last three photos. This stunning landscape was submitted by at Benno underscore photography. This one too doesn't require much actually. I shifted the white balance a little bit to the warm side, and then decreased the overall contrast, but not as strong as usual because this isn't that contrasty. For a change, I actually used the dehaze slider to dehaze the image. And then in the curves, I made this shape, which is just a variation of the standard S curve. Then in the red channel, I added some teal to the shadows and some red to the highlights. Then the only thing left to do with the color is some light color grading. I added some green to the midtones, some orange to the highlights, and more green but a colder hue to the shadows. Finally, I finished the edit with sharpening and grain, and here is the before and after. I hope you like this simple edit. Then let's go over the edit of this wonderful shot by at Aiden Iscapetti. Here I basically want to keep the vibe and mostly just recover details and enhance the colors subtly. I left the white balance just as it was and did my typical low contrast basic adjustments plus softening. Then in the tone curves I brought back some contrast and did my teal and red curve in the red channel and added some yellow in the blue channel. Next, in the calibration, I mostly just edited the green primary to get the grass looking the way I wanted. In the color grading tab, I added some yellowish green to the mids, some orange in the highs to enhance the sunset light on the building in the middle, and I added some yellow to the shadows to get this overall warm look throughout the whole image. And that's it already, the last step is sharpening a grain as always, and here is the final edit. I hope you like the look. Alright, let's finish the video with this last photograph by at Camilia Decle. 
so I'm fond of this warm vibe and we'll stick to that, however everything's just a bit too dark at the moment. So I started off by increasing the exposure by almost two stops and then continued with my usual decontrasting process. Then in the curves I did nothing out of the ordinary actually, an S curve for the contrast and I used the red channel to add some teal to the shadows. Then in the calibration tab I adjusted the green and the blue primary to adjust the colour in this still very warm looking way but I regained some of the greens and now we're left with this beautiful combination of greens and oranges in the overall really warm atmosphere of the shot. And that is actually it already. For a change, I didn't edit the color wheels because I was happy with this here. I just added a gradient from the top to boost the highlights a little in that area and I of course applied sharpening and grain and here is the before and after. I hope you like it. And that was it, those were the last 18 photos of the internal 36, so now we've gone through a roll of film basically. Anyway, thank you so much to everybody who participated, I hope you enjoyed the edit, and I'm sorry to everybody who didn't make it into the video, as I tried to communicate in the beginning sketch in part 1. I got a lot of submissions, so thank you so much to everybody who did submit a photo, and I'm sorry that I couldn't take all of them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I shall see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.